Uh, this should be a juicy one. Uh, designer Judy A. How do I pronounce this? Uh, Jurakek has issued a lawsuit against Capcom for allegedly extensively using her copyrighted photos within its games, including the environments, details, and most notably, the Resident Evil 4 logo. Uh, many of the sources stem from her copyrighted books, Surfaces, a collection of 1,200 photographs of textures that Jurakek shot herself. Published in 1996, the book is intended for visual research for artists, architects, and designers, and even came with a CD of the images, with a catch being that artists are required to license the images from her directly. In the lawsuit, Jurakek notes that at least 80 of her photographs have been used throughout Capcom's games, with over 100 pages of documentation that are undeniably near impossible to disprove. Um, just kind of to put it simply, the uh, the image... I'm sorry, I read that wrong. The evidence is there, like it's it's undeniable. Uh, yeah. Some of this information uh, stems from the Capcom leak of last year in which massive amounts of data and personal information was leaked uh, with the exact file names on Jurakex CD matching files in Capcom's database. So just one-to-one -one copying of names. Um, mm -hmm. As it stands, Jurakex lawyers are asking for up to $12 million in damages. And uh, just a side note for this, uh, for what it's worth, uh, Frankenstein's army director, Richard uh, Raphorst, has stated that Sturm, uh, one of the boss fights in Resident Evil Village once he gets to the factory, the, the propeller looking dude, um, is a direct one-to-one -one copy of his own monster's design. Um, it's also worth noting that these instances are separated by 10 plus years. Uh, so, you know, individual d designers and whatnot, if those have changed over that period mm. of time. Um... Thoughts, Blaine? Um, oh, to, to rehash a discussion, almost argument, but more just we're of two minds on this. Um, um, I, I think it's not that shocking because in general, again, not, not, to, not, not getting into intent yet, but like, um, things like this happen here and there. Um, and every time, you know, usually a company like this, they see this happen and they're like, okay, let's just fix this as quick as possible. Because the last thing they need is like more. Either may, the last thing they need is to then find out like other things happened on top of this, and then they have to answer those. So you know, quicker to deal with it, the better. Um, looking at like the examples, yeah, no, it's there's no like. Well, maybe it's just like an ins maybe is a coincidence. Like there's no coincidences. Things line up like perfectly. Yeah, even down the, uh... to. In the Polygon article you linked, uh, they showed like the Resident Evil Four logo is just like one to one, yeah. like layered on there. Uh, was the like, metal textures on the one thing, uh, the and like the the Resident Evil remake, like that's what leads me to think again. Um, that that's what makes me think that like you know this had to be someone had this and was like okay I'm going to use these and like in incorporated it I guess into the design documents or for like, or the stuff that the entire team would use because mm -hmm. it's cross what like at least two games that we know of probably more because I didn't look through the whole complaint I just looked through what they had showed as examples in the article um but like if it's if there's if there's like hundreds of examples or or over 100 examples then there then like that means that they someone was basically like this is now part of our um like a, a design library. That's what I'm. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Think right. Um, I know you, Jose. Well, you know, you you say what you think happened, and then I'll say what I think happened, and we can talk about how we had like, you know, we can talk about basically where we each fall on like the intent of this. Yeah, so I think it's interesting. So, from my perspective, and for for how I see how this would realistically go down, and basically any type of scenario is that, and so I'm I'm speaking from experience from. Um, from news channel broadcasting. So whenever we would use assets and, and we were a smaller company, so it's infinitely more applicable to bigger ones. If we are using assets or basing anything off of existing assets, we have to, we, we have spreadsheets, we have docs, we have to source every little thing. And if we have to pay for it, we have to make sure it's paid for because if we don't do that in the early stages and it comes back to bite you in the ass, it's going to be an infinitely bigger, uh, deal it's going to be your reputation it's going to be a bigger uh financial dump to to get uh sued so uh the company i worked for fortunately our bosses were very on on top of things where they would constantly double check like hey you got this b-roll or you got this uh music clip did you source it or did you or do we have to pay for it just let us know if we have to pay for it we'll pay for it etc cetera, etc cetera. like there's supposed to be checks and balances there um so 
what I would say realistically happened in this scenario is that an artist uh, did find these, obviously he found them, copied the files and whatnot. Um, either. So I don't, I don't know how many scenarios I'm going to make, but scenario a, um, he did not source it, said it was just his work, pass it on to a manager who didn't uh, have the information that it wasn't original work, uh, c- couldn't verify it, didn't know to look for like the specific library that he had stumbled upon. Um, scenario two, the uh, immediate manager uh, was aware of it, but for some for whatever reason did not um, do their due diligence to get it verified. Like I, like I wouldn't say like this is like an upper management or big corporate people saying like yes go go ahead and steal stuff uh as needed because we think it looks cool and like fuck everyone else fuck the original artist i i would chiefly put the blame entirely either on the original artist or the immediate manager for making sure that these checks and balances weren't being done and verifying that everything was was kosher and paid for and so then we actually do more or less agree, and I misunderstood part of your uh, argument, because we, me, for, for full disclosure, me and Jose had a, lo- a, not a long discussion, but a detailed discussion about it when the news first uh, came to our attention. And I fall more into the thing of, I less, I'm, I'm more open to the idea that not the higher, highest of higher ups, but just you could go a little bit higher up in the company of people seeing it and just being like, and eh, whatever, who cares? Um... But I I definitely agree that like this would because you're going to see people who are like oh my god I can't believe like Konami just went in and attempted to steal a bunch of stuff and it's like a uh, Capcom a uh, Capcom Konami Konami's um, evil for a lot of reasons yeah um no like like people going like oh Capcom went in and then just specifically sought this artist's work out to steal and it's like well probably not either someone low level like Jose used it or even maybe someone higher up was like eh, let's see what we can get away with and because they weren't called out on it then they didn't care. The reason that I'm more inclined to believe it could be something like that and maybe slightly higher up than maybe you would think, Jose, is um, the fact that like I've seen a lot of weird copyright shit when you get it, when you get across oceans like um, uh, uh, people like, OK, like uh, uh, Hirohito Araki, oh, fuck, I forget his first name, but Araki, the dude who made Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, um, he has always may use just the actual names of things in western media for names of either characters or abilities stands etc in his in his work jojo and that is the reason why now that localizations are more are happening more often you will see things like you'll hear a character say uh sticky fingers but you'll see the subtitle say zipper man or if you're watching the english dub they have to straight up say something different because right. Once you cross into the New York, once you cross into our copyright, it is an issue if you're doing a localization. But you can get away with it in if it's in Japan only. Right. Um, and so that's why I'm curious. Like, not that it would fall under fair use, because of course it wouldn't. But I'm wondering if, like, if if this happened, I, I think if this happened now, like if it was if Resident Evil Four and these documents, if these documents were used in a game now. And it got found out. I think a hundred percent, the upper company would not have anything to do. I would even be hard pressed to say a manager like saw it and didn't do anything. I would flat out say like an employee was probably just I'll use this, and then the manager never thought to look into it further than oh that's a cool thing that employee made mm-hmm. whatever. Um, the fact that it was done when Resident Evil Four and Remake were essentially being made. Uh, the fact that things like the uh, Rocky thing I just said. Um, uh, I mean hell, it's weird like. I, I saw a, a, there's a YouTuber Kenny Lauderdale who was talking who talks about a lot of cool things and uh, classic anime 90s anime 80s and aughts anime to a degree. Um, he mentioned how like there was the GoBots which was the Japanese Transformers and I think they purchased the they had the right, exclusive rights to use Transformers in Japan and another company tried to do like a similar looking visual styled animation that was basically looked like Transformers and. Th- not and the the Transformers rights holders, I guess Hasbro didn't sue them, but mm-hmm. the GoBots people sued them, and so like that's what my brain is just like. I wonder where this falls as far as legalities. What they were, thought they could get away with, what were they able to get away with, and the fact that now they're only we're only really finding out because of the fact that the data leak happened, and I guess this person had extra info to be like, no, you can't deny this even mm-hmm. further because I have the file names now, and is, they're. Is is there a thing about like international copyright law where 
I know you, I know you, so, you source the uh, rocky stuff, but is it just like that just does not apply over oceans to like a certain extent? Like you can use source material as long as you're not like using it like in its pure format. Like if, like if you're, if you're being extent. additive. I, I don't know the full extent because I know there's a fair amount of things that like because they were never pursued because like the whole um, for uh, uh, as a, as a, I know you probably know this Jose but just for anybody listening who maybe doesn't um so IP protection works as if someone uses your IP and you don't do anything about it within a certain amount of time um or or you're made or if it's if it can be proven that you're aware of it and you don't do anything about it um. Eventually, if you try to do something about it or something else, a judge can look at it and be like, "Well, no, you didn't. You didn't do. You didn't protect your copyright, so it's on your in, on your uh, on your shit." Yeah, um, that, that's that's exactly why Blizzard ha- uh, cracked down on um on the people t- originally that were trying to do the WoW Classic. No, exactly. Um, and uh, it's this, it's the same reason, like uh. It's the reason why when people announce like fan sequels and fan games like Nintendo will like bring the hammer down because I mean you have to protect your IP if you don't then when someone like actively steals your IP a judge like I said can go just be like well you didn't protect it here so whatever. Um that being said like I know for f- I don't know if the issues getting across the co- across oceans my god your cat is so cute. <laughs> um I don't know if it falls under the fact that because I guess like, you know, if you didn't do anything about it for a while, it just doesn't matter. Or if it's more the fact that I know copyright law in Japan works vastly different than it does in the U S. Right. Um, so, cause it's something how, like, like how creators of manga, I think it's like they own, they own, it's like they own the characters, but not the series or vice versa. I forget how it works. It's very weird. It's like how, the, like, because like you'll see p- characters are merchandised, and the main original creator might not see anything back on that. But then, like the series itself, they get paid. Again, it's that or it's vice versa. I forget the exact definition. Copyright law is weird already, and it's different in different countries. So you have all these situations where, like, I, I genuinely can't tell you which it would be without researching it extensively, which I'm right. not going to do for this conversation. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> 